scooting into our final speaker of the night. She is an Alberta-based performer, advocate, and award-winning playwright who is passionate about good food, exploring new ways to approach storytelling, and all things strange and unusual. Ladies, gentlemen, theys and thems, please welcome to the stage, Louise Casemore. Take a second. How are you? How are you doing? Uh, as mentioned by Europa, my name is Louise Casemore. I am a playwright and performer uh, based in Calgary. And today I'm going to be chatting about site specific and immersive theater, otherwise known as theater in the wild. Uh, as artistic director of my company, Defiance Theater, I specialize in the development and execution of new Canadian performance that takes an alternative approach, both in content and delivery. Uh, I founded the company as a means to provide a platform for the incredible playwrights in this province to see their work. Now, since conversation is a little bit more in my bag, I'd like to actually just pose the question. Is anybody here actually have familiarity with site-specific or immersive theater? <coughs> great, you've got four minutes. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, that's great. We're going to sort of go through the basics here. I'm going to cover sort of the beginner's guide to theater in the wild. So now, site-specific or found space theater, these are umbrella terms for performance that happens anywhere it doesn't traditionally occur. So it could be an alleyway, a cemetery, as seen here with Thou Art Here's production of Shakespeare's Will. Uh, it could be the lobby of a movie theater, uh, or, as in the case of my earlier work, a haunted mine shaft. Uh, so, within all of that, site-specific work tears down the walls of traditional performance, creating plays that are intimate, authentic, and highly in emphasis of how an environment can help tell a story. It helps the imagination focus on the human experience. And inside of that world of site-specific theatre, much like trying to define who started punk rock, there's a lot of intricacy in the art form and room for debate. So the next uh, few slides here are a few different terms to help define the relationship between story and its environment. So we're going to start off with promenade theater, promenade, uh, which originally harkens back to the days of carnivals and traveling shows. It involves a scenario where performers stay in one place, but the audience moves from location to location to encounter different scenes or aspects of the story as they move. Now, site-specific theater uh, and site-sympathetic theater is performed in a venue that's generally related to the content. So as seen here with my show Functional, which creates a fully realized AA meeting for 10 audience members, uh, it takes place in any venue you'd believe an AA meeting would happen. So in Edmonton, we did it in a church, in Calgary, an office building. Now, environmental or site-specific theater is where location is integral to the content. So it's not a library, it's the Central Memorial Library. And a terrific example is Catch the Keys production of Dead Center of Town, every year using a different location in Edmonton to tell true stories from Edmonton's past. Now, one of the most famous immersive theater examples is Punch Drunk Sleep No More, which takes over five full floors of the McKittrick Hotel, the audience members wear masks, and they explore freely. Uh, now, inside of that, we want to see <sighs> exploration and freedom and things that will surprise you. And so that show is an example of how immersive theater can be in a space that's interacted with, but not necessarily the performance. Uh, so tearing down those walls between the fourth wall and the audience allows for interaction inside the world, inside the story, and frankly, with everything in between. Now here, with Then She Fell from Third Rail Projects, it's a different side of that. Seen here, when the white rabbit asks you to paint the roses, oh mama, you will pick up that paintbrush and have an experience you'll never forget. These are shows where you are interacting with the story in participation. However, in the case with all these types of performance, there's a bit of a stigma, as you can likely imagine. Not all audience goers are necessarily enthusiastic about the idea of participation, uh, or theater which doesn't necessarily play within the conventional rules of me here and you over there. <laughs> <laughs> 
we have this image in our minds of being dragged on stage and ending up a punchline. There's an emotional association with being humiliated or to the horror of our Canadian sensibilities that we'll be asked to do something and we'll do it wrong. <laughs> now, even on the creation end, there are practical risks with making theater in the wild. Fighting the weather, accessibility, and buildings not meant for performance, including an experience of my own when a broken lock on a storage shed that was also my green room for a sold-out show uh, forced the audience to wait patiently for me to escape the closet oh. so the show could actually begin. <laughs> <laughs> so why do we do this? Why take an already difficult vocation and mix it with the threat of mosquitoes and audiences terrified of having their pants fall down and on occasion drunk random people wandering through your monologue? Because it's amazing. Because it's surprising. And because it's necessary. Because of the high cost and low availability of traditional theater spaces, without this kind of work, there's a limit to the stories that we'll ever see. And in an age of technological distance, it creates an opportunity to look each other in the eye and truly be part of something special that can never be recreated. We want you to embrace the bravery where you can actually smell the forest of that Midsummer Night's Dream or taste the pies from Mrs. Lovett's shop or even grab a beer with your favorite redhead bartender in a pub down the street. So this is an invitation of sorts not just to come and see a show, but to inspire some curiosity about the plays and the people who are creating them outside of traditional space, to lean into it as a challenge that you can rise to because it's happening right here and it needs you. So finally, I would like to shed a little bit of light on some of these incredible artists making this work in Alberta. Uh, Thou Art Here, Theatre Yes, Catch the Keys, Common Ground Art Society with their Found Festival, and right here in Calgary, Swallow a Bicycle, making brave, bold art for you. Thank you.